Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's Space Engine video we're going to be talking about various misconceptions and facts about black holes that you may have not actually been aware of. In other words, we're going to talk about black hole stuff you didn't actually know. Welcome to What The Math. And let's start with the number one interesting fact or misconception about black hole. And that's of course, what makes them so terrifying and so scary? Well, it's actually not their mass. It's their size that makes them so incredibly, incredibly strong and so incredibly terrifying. And not the big size, it's their tininess. As a matter of fact, it's the fact that so much mass has been compacted in such a tiny, tiny point. So in, in other words, if I were to take Earth and if I were to turn it into a tiny pinpoint, it would turn into a terrifying black hole as well. And although in reality this would be kind of impossible, a star that's big enough to go through supernova might actually collapse and might turn into a tiny point. And this tiny point would then turn into a very, very powerful and terrifying black hole. And so the first misconception here is that what makes black hole really scary is its tiny, tiny size. And this of course takes us to the second misconception about black holes, and that's the fact that they're not infinitely small, but they do have a finite size. And this size is known as the Planck length. And Planck length refers to the tiniest possible size in our universe, and this is essentially the size of a black hole. This size about, is about 10 to the minus 35 meters, and this is about 100 quintillionth of a proton. Basically, it is ridiculously small. So no, it's not that black holes are infinitely small, it's just that they're really super, super tiny. And the third misconception about black holes is that they're not really black. Okay, yes, they do uh, prevent light from escaping and they do cause things around them to turn kind of darkish. But the reality is that they do emit some kind of energy. First of all, anything that comes close to a black hole gets shredded apart and that by itself creates a tremendous amount of energy. As a matter of fact, some of the brightest objects in our universe were created by black holes shredding them. We actually think that black holes create some of the brightest light in our universe and many quasars are essentially black holes that create a tremendous amount of energy. But on top of that, black hole itself actually emits energy known as Hawking radiation. And this principle we'll discuss in more detail in one of the future videos, but it occurs around every black hole. And it can actually be detected if you're close enough to a black hole. So no, they're not invisible or black, they just emit radiation that we can't see with our eyes. Another misconception about black holes is that some people think that they create funnels or look like a funnel because they're often represented that way. That is very, very not true. The most realistic representation of a black hole was in the movie Interstellar. They're essentially spheres that from the outside would look like little balls or possibly large balls that warp and stretch space around them, causing all kinds of interesting Doppler effects of light and basically creating something that may look similar to what you see on the screen. And so the infamous final representation is basically when you combine 3D space into two dimensions. In that sense, they, yes, they do create a kind of a gravitational funnel that you may have seen before, but in reality, they don't actually look like this because they're basically just spheres that have tremendous gravitational effects around them. And because of this gravitational effect, they can get really, really, really big because essentially a lot of matter does fall into the black holes increasing their size and thus increasing their so-called event horizon. As the event horizon grows, as the black hole grows larger and larger, it can reach some massive sizes. Some of the largest black holes we've discovered are several times larger than our entire solar system. 
And pretty much every major galaxy in our universe has a supermassive black hole in its center, including, of course, our own galaxy that has a black hole by the name of Sagittarius A star. It's about 26,000 light years away from us. But all of these black holes have huge masses and as a result of this have really, really large event horizons. So even though black holes themselves, the singularity uh, itself is really, really tiny, their event horizon is really, really huge. And the event horizon is what people imagine when they think of black holes. So it's not that black holes are actually large, it's that the event horizon grows with mass. Now, we come to the next unusual fact about black holes, and this is in relation to things getting really, really strange when you get really close to them. For one, it's basically impossible to stay in stable orbit when you get really, really close to a black hole. The black hole itself will distort space so much that at some point you reach the area where no matter how fast you move, you will always, always end up falling into a black hole even if you try to go really, really fast. On the other hand, if a black hole is spinning, which it can totally do, there is an area outside of black hole or outside the event horizon known as the ergosphere. And inside this ergosphere, space is always dragged around you. And even if you try really hard, you will never be able to stay still. You will always, always be moving, even if you try to move against the flow. In other words, it will always carry you somewhere along with it. And eventually, you'll probably end up falling into a black hole yet again. And what's even stranger is that ergosphere can even move faster than the speed of light. Yes, matter cannot move faster than the speed of light, but space itself can. So a black hole that spins really fast can actually create an ergosphere that will move faster than the speed of light, meaning that you might actually get dragged by that ergosphere at the speed faster than the speed of light, which is by itself incredible and terrifying. But since you can't move faster than the speed of light, you will be stuck inside that thing forever. Until, of course, the black hole swallows you. And now we come to some gruesome, unusual facts about black holes. Depending on the size of a black hole, and depending on how close you are, you will most likely die in a horrible and terrifying way. If the black hole is really, really small, in other words, if its event horizon is really small, and the black hole has low mass, then approaching it within a few kilometers means that you will get spaghettified. You will get stretched and pulled into a long spaghetti that will hurt like crazy, and will kill you practically instantly. But in those few moments of you being stretched, you will experience pain like never before. On the other hand, if the black hole is really, really big and you come to its event horizon and decide to cross it, it's very likely that the time around you will slow down and as the time around you slows down, you get burned alive to a crisp by the increased amount of radiation that suddenly rushes toward you. This is because the time has slowed around you, but the universe itself has accelerated, so more and more energy gets thrown at you. And as the time around you accelerates and the, the time inside of your spacecraft slows down, more and more energy hits you, and eventually you hit by so much energy that you basically burn. Not particularly fun way to die either. But on the other hand, if a black hole is really, really small and is far enough away from you, like for example, at a distance where our uh, moon is or even farther away where Mars is, in that case, you wouldn't actually feel anything. The black hole, especially if it's small enough in mass, would do absolutely nothing to you. It would not suddenly start sucking in matter. It would simply act as another planet that is ultra super small, but has a mass of a planet. So black holes don't really act like vacuum cleaners unless they have tr a tremendous mass and start increasing that mass by absorbing more and more objects around them. But that doesn't really always happen. And finally, we come to the last interesting bit or an unusual fact that you may have not known about. Black holes, because of the way that the event horizon forms and can be considered as the definition of a volume of a black hole, seem to have or can have very, very low density. As a matter of fact, if we were to create a black hole from the center of our solar system up to about a Jupiter, the density inside of that black hole would be approximately same as the density of water on Earth. If, however, we were to actually move the black hole to a larger size and make it 
even bigger past the orbit of Neptune, and this would be a giant sphere uh, that would essentially be a black hole, its density would be similar to air on Earth, which is very strange. But on the other hand, a black hole that's about three times the sun's mass, or basically the smallest theoretical possible uh, mass of a black hole, would have its event horizon at a radius of about nine kilometers, and this would mean that its density would be incredibly, incredibly high. It would be about two quadrillion grams per cubic centimeter. Now, that's something that you don't really see very often in daily life. So density of a black hole does change and decreases dramatically with the size of event horizon. The more massive the black hole, the less its density. Well, anyway, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it and hopefully you also enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and potentially share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos or likes to learn through video games. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to learn something else new and interesting. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.